Today I'm going to show you how to create shadow layers from any font in Affinity Designer. Let's get started. Hey everybody, so today I'm going to show you how to create shadow layers from any font in Affinity Designer. If you haven't already, you may want to go to the Affinity website and download the trial version of Affinity Designer so you can follow along with this tutorial. This trial version will work on a Mac or Windows computer. I've put the link in the description below if you need to take a minute to download it. If you have an iPad, there is an iPad version, but there is no free trial. The techniques I'm going to show you in this video will work on the iPad version as well, but if you want me to make an iPad version of this tutorial, please let me know in the comments section below. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and create a new page in Affinity Designer. Just make the page whatever size you need it to be for your project. Now let's select the font that we're going to use for the text. If you don't have the character palette open, just come up to View, click on Studio, and then come down to Character and open the character palette. I'm just going to top out my text here. I'm going to grab the text tool, the artistic text tool. I'm just going to top out the word graduation in all capitals. Grab my move tool. I'm just going to scale that up. Now I want to choose my font. I'm just going to use a font called crown title. And again, I'm just going to drag and I'm going to scale this up. And if you don't have this font, if you want to download it, you can go to Defont and download Crown Title. And I'll put a link in the description below if you want to click on that and download this font. So what I want to do first is I want to adjust the tracking because even though all these letters are touching, in my opinion, they're too close. So I want to spread them out a little bit. So I'm going to come over to my character palette. I'm going to come down here to tracking and I'm just going to adjust the tracking some. And you can see most of the letters are still touching the G and the R, the R and the A. And you can see right along that most of the letters are still touching a little bit. And that's what I want. So I'm going to leave it like that. If you use a different font or if you use the same font and you want your tracking different, you can set the tracking to however you want it to look. I'm going to scale this down a little bit by clicking the corner and holding the command key to scale it from the middle. Now with your text layer selected, you want to come up to the layer menu, come down to convert to curves, and now this is no longer text, it's just a graphic, so you will not be able to click on it and change the text. So after I convert this to curves, I'm going to come back up to the layer menu, and I'm going to ungroup all, and now if I take the color off, you can see the outlines, and you can see how some of these are overlapping. So I want to weld those together so it'll all be one graphic. So with all my letters selected, I want to come up here to the top of the screen to my Pathfinder tools. I want to weld them together using the Add button. And now you can see that they're all one graphic. There's no overlapping pieces anymore. Now I'm just going to fill that with a color. And if you need this to be a particular size to fit your project, what you can do is click on the Transform palette. And if you don't have the Transform palette open, you can come back up to View, Studio, and then Transform and open that palette. And just make sure you have this middle square selected. That way when you scale it, it'll scale from the middle. And if you need this to be, say, 16 by 5, you can just change it to 16 and then click on the height and change that to 5. And that way it's the size you need it to be for your project. If you click this little icon here that looks like a chain, you'll notice it has these two little lines connecting these two boxes. So if you change one box, it changes the other one in proportion. And if you uncheck it, then you can change the height and the width separately. Okay, now that you have your text, the size you need it to be, we're going to go ahead and create our shadow layer. So I'm going to move this down just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is click on my text, and you'll see here in the layers palette on the right that that layer is selected. And if you don't have the layers palette open, go ahead and open it now because we're going to be using it quite a bit. So come back up to view, to studio, and then choose layers to open the layers palette. Now with that layer selected, we want to press Command J on the keyboard to duplicate that layer. You can also go up to Edit and Duplicate if you want to use the menu. And then what we want to do is turn off this top layer, just uncheck this box to hide that layer. And you know, before I do that, I want to change the color of this layer. So I'm just going to change it to 
it's kind of orange color and then I'm just going to turn it off that way you can see we've got two layers going on here now I want to click on that bottom layer and select that text layer and now what we want to do is add a stroke to this layer so come up here to either your color palette or your swatches palette and you want to click the little stroke icon here to bring that to the front above the fill and you just want to choose the color for that stroke I'm just going to choose like a blue color here and then we want to come down to the stroke palette and if you don't have the stroke palette open just come back up to view to studio and then down to stroke to open that palette and we want to raise the width of that stroke and I'm going to do about 30 and now you'll see let me change the color of my my stroke so you can see a little better okay so you can see we have the outline here of our text you'll see these little blue lines the wireframe of our letters and when we do a 30 stroke what that does is 15 points of that stroke is to the outside and 15 points is to the inside and that's what we want you want to make sure in your stroke palette your align is set to center because that way it'll work the way you need it to work the second button will align your stroke to the inside so the whole stroke will be inside these lines and that could come in handy at some point this third one aligns the stroke the entire stroke to the outside but what we're going to do we can't really use that feature because then the letter and the shadow won't weld together properly so you want to make sure you leave this on center and then you want to come down right below it it says draw behind fill so we want to turn that on so it'll move our stroke behind the fill layer of the letters so now we can see the the whole letter and we still have the strokes at the center and if I remove the color from the fill you can see that that entire stroke is still there we've just hidden it behind the text so we can see how big we want that shadow layer to be so at 30 points to me that shadow layer looks pretty good if you want to make it a little smaller you can if you want to make it a little bigger you can but to me you know 30 points looks pretty good for this so once you get the stroke set to the size you want your shadow layer to be we're going to come up here to layer and we're going to do expand stroke and then what that does is it disconnects the stroke from the letter so now you have these two pieces and so now what we want to do is select both of those pieces and we want to come up here to the Pathfinder tools and click Add to weld those together. And now with that selected, what you want to do is click on this button here to divide it. And that's going to help these little pieces go away. So we click Divide. And then with all that selected, just hit Add. And it'll weld all those little pieces together. And now we just need to close up this little part. So you can either get a box and cover it up with a box or you can use the pen tool and I'm just going to use the pen tool I'm just going to click here here I'm just going to draw a box around that I'm going to turn my stroke off and just add a fill color and now you can see I've got that covered so what I want to do is select those two pieces come back up here and weld those together with the add button and there we have our shadow layer and then what we can do is just turn our text back on and then make sure we drag this layer below it now when you drag this layer below that layer if you drag it to here and you let it go it's going to put this layer inside of that layer so you want to make sure that that pink bar goes all the way across and then drop it so it brings that to the front so now you have your shadow layer and you have your text layer and like i said you can do this with any font then you can just click on each one of those and change the color whatever you want those to be and that's pretty much it but let's say you want to make multiple shadow layers well that's pretty simple to do too so what I'm going to do is click on my text come over here to my layers palette I'm going to click this little lock icon to lock that layer now let's choose that shadow layer and I'm going to press command J to make a duplicate of it and this middle layer I'm going to go ahead and lock that one so that we don't move that. I'm gonna click on this very bottom layer and I'm gonna change the color. Let's change it to like a green color or a blue color maybe. And then I'm also gonna click on 
the stroke here and I'm going to click that same color. Then I'm going to come down to the stroke, just make that stroke bigger. Uh, let's say about 30 points again. Like I said, you can do these however you want to do them. If you want to make the second one bigger, you can. But I'm just going to make it the same size as the first one. Then I'm going to come up to layer and I'm going to expand the stroke again. And then over here in the layers palette, I'm going to select that outline. We can turn these off for a second. But you can see I have that outline and I have that shadow layer. So I'm just going to, I'm going to turn those back on. But here in the layers palette, just click on that outline. Click on that shadow layer. Then we just want to weld those together. And now we have that layer. So you can see it's pretty simple to add more layers if you want to add more layers. If you want to add a third one, just click on Curves, Command J, lock that layer there. We'll click on that layer we just created, change the color again, and it's already set to the 30 points. We just did the other one. And if you want to, um, I'm going to go ahead and change this fill color to the same thing. And come up to Layer, Expand Stroke. Then I can do Command A to select all because we have those first three layers locked. So it's only going to select those two layers we're working on. So just press Command A to select all. Come up here, add to weld them together. And we're pretty much done. You can keep adding as many shadow layers as you want, but I'm just going to do three for now. Once you get this done, what you can do, just unlock all the layers. Then you can come up here to File, Export. Click on SVG and you can just leave it on SVG for export. And if you want to put something here, put like 300 in the raster DPI and then just hit export. And we'll just save that as graduation. And then it'll automatically add the .SVG to the end. Click on desktop and save. And we can look here on our desktop and there's our file there. We can just import that into Design Space or Silhouette Studio. Yeah. Pretty cool, pretty easy. And uh, like I said, you can do this with any font. You're not limited to the fonts that are built into the programs that already have a shadow layer. This way you can do it with any font, create your shadow layers, and then save them as SVG and bring them in to Design Space or Silhouette Studio. And then you can just save this in uh, Affinity Designer format. And that way you can always come back and uh, make changes later on if you want to. So anyway, let me know what you think about that. And uh, I'm going to take this file and I'm going to upload it to the Facebook group. So if you're not a member, I'll put the link in the description below. You can join the Facebook group. Got all my files that I create on these tutorials where you can download from there to try them out. So yeah, just click and join if you want to download these. So I guess that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Also make sure you click the little bell icon and turn on notifications so you'll know when I upload new videos. And if you want to follow me on social media, all the links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you later.